encaustic art or painting with wax, let's have a look at this old vintage kit. Hey, I'm Pam Duthie and today we have got a little bit of something different. Now if you're a creative person, no doubt you've probably tried a few different crafts and you might even have supplies and kits lying about that you've tried ages ago or you haven't touched. So I want to have a go at a semi-regular series where I'm going to look at old kind of vintage kits. Now I'm not sure how old this is, it's probably at least 15 years ago when I got it. So what we're going to do today, we're going to have a wee look at unboxing of the supplies that I've got and then next time we'll have a wee go at painting and encaustic painting. So I hope this is something that interests you. If you've had a go at encaustic painting, let me know in the comments down below. So first thing I've got with this bumper pack of encaustic things is Michael Bossom's encaustic art how to paint with wax and this is a super this is a really good book actually this is really cool um it gives us lots of projects and ideas what to do I mean just look at those first pictures it painting landscapes with flowers and stuff it is so gorgeous and like I say it's about 15 years ago since I even touched this kit um, but I remember this book being great with lots of projects to help you learn how to paint with wax and yeah some introduction to it what tools you need which hopefully we've got some of uh, talking about the card you need to use oh, yeah some of the techniques that you're going to use hopefully how to set up your workstation different techniques to use with the iron and yeah before before I get too much into it here I'll explain what encaustic art is is using colored wax and a source of heat to create a vibrant beautiful painting or hopefully a vibrant beautiful painting some landscapes how to use the other tools Oh, and fantasy scapes. This, this is what drew me to it. The purples and reds. We, we now I like purples and pinks and yeah. Okay, so that is the book. And the price stamp. And the price stamp on this says it was eight pounds at the time. Don't know how long ago it was, but really good book. Michael Bossom encaustic art how to paint with wax and other things I had here firstly was the iron now this isn't in the box because I would have to disassemble it it, it wasn't stored in the box because I'm not that kind of a person but we got the box with the iron in it and that was 19 pounds 95 pence not the cheapest hobby but that's not bad and here is the iron itself So the iron has a temperature dial so you can make it hotter or cooler depending on how much you want to melt down your wax it looks like it's not looks like it's a little bit dirty but hey, <laughs> that should be easy enough to clean up um, got a nice long cable and a plug and the little handle which this has to be disassembled to fit it back into the box but this is the iron so temperature control and the plate for it to heat heat up with yep that's the power also one thing you can use with encaustic things is you can add stamps to them so i had a stamp of this rather cute dragon and an ink pad to go with it i don't know if this will still be inky i was just going to touch it with my hand to find out it probably isn't There also, there also is the second tool, which is the stylus, which is a heated pen. Let's pull this out. Heated pen that you can have different nibs onto the end of. Um, there's no temperature controls or anything on this. You just unscrew. That looks like, yeah, that's like a Phillips head screw. You just unscrew it and change the nibs. And I do have a micro iron. It's like a mini one of the iron. Um, 
little tiny micro iron to use in this as well. There were other heads, they're probably somewhere about, but I've misplaced them for now. It looks like there was another wee booklet that came with the kit. I'm not sure which box this came in, um, but this this is less beautiful, but a little descriptive. Uh, black and white pictures and just some details of how to use your kit. And the super, the super fun, most important thing is your coloured waxes. So let's have a look and see if I've still got all of these. It's handy, it has a little tray inside the kit so you can pull them all out and they don't go everywhere. Trying to show them to camera, they will. And there's a fantastic selection of colours and it looks like I've still got them all, which is pretty good for me. And finally, the big box. <laughs> this, um, this I believe the... In this, I believe the coloured waxes came in and there's lots of papers and I think this is where I stored my old projects so let's have a look and see what I did before and I wonder if we're going to be able to make anything as good or better now and on the outside of the box you can totally see why I loved it we've got the pictures step by step lots of things here okay so into the box. Yes, as I hoped, there are some pictures that I did many years ago when I was experimenting with this. So what I love about this, let's let's move the box away so we can look at the pictures one at a time without a distraction. What I love here is it's great for the imagination. I really love this as an art form because you don't necessarily have the same amount of control over it. This sounds crazy, but literally you just let the waxes merge and you stop when you see something. It's like looking at patterns in a fire. So you tell it the colours you want to put on, you put the colours on and you just iron it over and the melted wax flows and drips and creates patterns. And when you see something, you stop. So it gives you kind of fantasy seascapes, all sorts of things. I would definitely say this one's probably underwater. What we called this method was serendipity because you don't have control, it's just a happy accident. And some lands and some attempt at landscapes, which landscapes isn't really my thing, but I think they turned out pretty cool actually. Um, practicing different techniques of sky and then mountains and birds and little foxgloves and grass textures. Yeah. And some more dark landscapes. That looks a bit scribbly. I won't lie. Looks a bit scribbly, but still a whole lot of fun. And what's this one? Okay. <laughs> You can see things. The other thing you could do, I mean, I think that little section there, you could cut that out and that's like a fantasy castle on rocks or something. Um, again, there's little sections here you could cut out that are kind of pleasing, but the overall image, not so much. But you can you can spend hours just looking at these and getting ideas. So it's good for creativity, I think. A little practice, I'm quite sure. It's kind of cool, different angles you look at it. Shows you different ideas. That can be water falling down or... I have no idea, but hey, it's all learning. And this seems to have some glitteriness in it. It looks like it could be a frame for some kind of image that you've stamped yourself. And here we have another landscape in blues and greens. That's good. It's got a kind of pond in it. If I remember correctly, you can make the water by just using a piece of kitchen towel and rubbing away till you'd lift off some of the colour. So yeah, kind of happy with that one. That's kind of cute. And obviously this was a seahorse stamp and just a colour and then some texture around. Gives a kind of sea -y scene if that's even a word. 
And here's an example of something with the stamp. Um, yeah, that's about all I can say good about it. It's random. You can see the shape of the iron making random shapes in here. And then this kind of dribbly pattern is literally where you lift the iron up and it gives a kind of sucky mark. This is what I remember vaguely of the process, but there's the dragon stamped onto it. Uh, here is another serendipity type one. This is a which way up would you look at this one? Okay, again, you're seeing the kind of dribble patterns. That's almost like a castle. That's cool. That looks like a bow tie. <laughs> it could be. Oh, which way up could this be? And like I say, that's what I love about it. When you do these dribble random things, you get dribble random results, but that's kind of cool. And there's a more festive one. That's like Christmas in cat. That's like my background colours. But it's kind of cool. And I know how you do that one because I can see that is just the shape of the iron. So you just put the iron down in different directions all the way around and it makes this really interesting effect. I like that one. That's pretty cool. And another kind of, and another drivel, drivel, and another dribble fantasy landscape. I'm going to say this is kind of in a cave looking out. There's a bridge over some water, mountains in the background. Yeah, or this way up. Oh, that could be a dragon. <laughs> yeah, um, no idea what that is if we're that way up. Um, but yeah, there's wings and there's a tail. Sort of. This way up. Nope. Nope, nope. Not seen anything this way up. No, I don't think it should be that way up either. Okay, so I'm going to say, right, change this up. There's the dragon's head and there's some wings and it's flying over and there's a bridge and some clouds. I see something. There we go. And this is the joy of encaustic painting pictures just appear or hopefully and I think the rest of this box is just the papers that comes with it so they're these kind of glossy cardstock and some frames as well some cut out frames so you can frame your works I don't think a gold frame is quite right for that one and also for the larger ones this means you could frame sections of them to try and get an idea of what's the best so that's kind of cool uh, large pieces of paper smaller pieces of paper and tiny pieces of glossy type cardstock okay so i hope you liked seeing a quick introduction and an unboxing an unboxing unboxing of this wonderful art if you're interested let me know in the comments down below and next week we will try making a painting thank you so much for joining me